Lewis, three completing these two pairs. Four meetings, and the Poles have won three of those meetings. The last of his last week in Wales. The Germans got the bad Poles and both. There you go, there So ladies and gentlemen, once again, give it up for your finalists in the men's goal. In red, the Germany. Here comes Laura and Rafa Beck. And in black for Poland, that was Tony and Amazon. You're very welcome back. Two matches down, two three setters, and I uh, wouldn't bet against this one going to three either, Dan. Daniel McGee is with me again. This is third match. Daniel, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, the defending champions, of course, in black, furthest from the camera. Black tops, that is. Adam Swalina, Baka. Against in red for Germany, it's uh, Rafi Beck and Peter Kesbar. Yeah, guys, get prepared for plenty of power and plenty of noise on this one, Mark. This is going to be a cracking match. Yeah, Beck and Kesbar are only together a few short months, but already these pairs have met each other four times. And uh, it's the Poles who are leading that head-to-head 3-1. -head and as early as the last week, last week in Wales, the Poles beat Germans. Two months ago it is now the Germans beat the Poles in Bulgaria. So um, this will be close and this will be tight. Of course the Germans came through that tough semi-final against uh, the Danes yesterday. They looked out of it at one point. And the Poles are here as defending champions actually going for a hat-trick of titles. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see... Uh, you can see the German coach there, he's been working on his tactics after watching uh, Lamfus and Siddell play against them in the semi-finals as well, so maybe they will come with something different today. Yeah, and there's serious arguments after that uh, match also. Well, I wasn't watching it, it really soon about the serve battle of Yeah, the, the controversy there was uh, the number of times that Mark Lamfus was pulled for his low serve, and... Uh, so Alina serving at a similar level and not being called, so maybe just that lack of consist consistency there. We had a real funny situation at the Dutch Open where Adam was getting called in one particular match. And I was sitting behind the court and then at one point he tucked his shirt in and pulled his, his uh, shorts right up to almost his, his, his nipples. He said, now there's my waist. And he, and he played like that for three or four rallies. 
have to say these guys are really, really stretching it to the boundaries. Um, it's, it's just on the line whether it's, it's too high or too low. But it's going to be interesting to see here. Will it be an issue in this match or will there be no faults called? Me most of the time is, you know, I don't think these guys are changing. You know, they, they do the same routine over and over again, but then the uh, inconsistent calling from maybe different service judges or their interpretation of what's legal and what's, and what's not that sometimes can ruin a match. Yeah, it's definitely men's doubles now. It's a weapon to have that serve and coming from that level, getting it below level net, and you're having to push up and you're pushing up players that have so much power it's a, it's a huge weapon and uh, these guys are pushing up to the boundary and definitely just change the match we've got a serving judge that is out there to try and force the rules or I don't pair this well and let it go Challenging each other. Nobody wants to give away that lift. The front court is going to be a very determining part of this match. Neither pair wanting to give away the attack, and both pairs having such a strong attack, it's going to be crucial in this match. It's been a tough old year for the Poles. You know, they haven't won since the Prague Open in September, which in their pers from their perspective is a long time uh, they haven't been as prolific as they have been say last year or since say Swalina was with Logos they're really f starting to feel the pressure a little bit I think in terms of qualification for Rio as effectively that's what this is all about both week in week out it's tournament after tournament Rafi Beck, of course, winning a medal. And Baku also. Yeah, it'll be huge for these guys' confidence, having that, having that win under their belt and being part of that history. And now these guys aren't afraid of these Polish pairs and that level of band. And they, they can really step up and play. The younger German pair yesterday as well went out there and they really put it up to the Polish. So... They're definitely not having these tournaments as easy as they had it in the last Olympic qualification. Of course, that was that was Logos. It's a different partnership, but there's great experience from, from Vaca as well. Of course, that was four years ago. This is four years on, and these guys are you know the no spring chickens anymore. I feel that there's a big gap coming through now from the, the men's doubles. The younger pairs are all now starting to make a move, and even in the in the mixed doubles, Lampus is making moves there and. There's a lot of good young pairs, Christian Daugard. It's not being completely controlled by the, the older strong pairs now. Even the, the other Polish partnerships have been, sp uh, been split up, so the depth is, is there in the men's doubles. In the past, we would have always seen one or two 
good English pairs at the Irish Open as well, so you've seen a lot of their younger pairs coming into the event now. Eleven five. That's a good start from the German pair, sprinting into the interval lead, six point advantage. Yeah, Kaiser making really good moves, fast onto the net, and I've just felt that he's been so brave and taking it on, and he's dominated the front of the court, forcing the Polish onto the defense. And there's huge power coming from both of the Germans. So if they can keep this control on the front court and the court, then be difficult for the Poles to back certainly into this first set, trailing by six points. The Germans already beaten the Polish pair en route to this final. You alluded to there that Morin and Skutlarczyk split up to play with the younger players. Beck and Kersbauer beat Morin and the young uh, Milos Boschat, who is a really impressive young man, uh, a real potential star for Poland going forward. Yeah, you look at uh, in the past one pair, then it becomes two, now it becomes three. Mm. That, that really fills out the tournament when you've got these three pairs in the event. And either of these partnerships is, is a threat. Yeah. And they've also got a few singles players all in around the same level. And that's why they're seeded six for the men's team championship coming up in uh, Kazan in February. That's more like what we were used to seeing. Well, Lena fast onto the net. Vaka powering through from the court. Can they get back in control? <laughs> See that move again, Mark, earlier in the rally there by Kuisper. Fast on and then setting up the rally. Feel that that has been the difference so far. It's good to see these younger German pairs coming through because you know, after they won the the uh, team championship in around 2012 awards, but Germany had more team events in their pocket than Denmark had. Uh, it, 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 they were old teams, uh, they were experienced teams, but now as you said, you see Lampros, you see uh, Isabel Hertic coming through, another beautiful player, young player, Franziska Volkman, another young one, and uh, all they need now is, and then even in singles, uh, you see young Fabian Roth coming, and uh, Max Weisskerk, and uh, these guys, it's starting to look good again for Germany. It certainly is. Once again, there you've seen uh, guys going fast onto the net. And uh, he has been the one that has made the difference in this game so far for me. Going forward, always being brave to take on the net. So, youth coming through on both sides then, from the Polish and the Germans. The women's side. It's a little bit uh, under strength, of course, from the Polish point of view. Not too many Juliana Schenks coming through in uh, Germany, I fear, also. See that time, uh, as Chris Burr moves forward that time, Adam chooses to go over the top of the Germans. And that could be what they're going to need to do, because the threat is coming thick and fast from the Germans, and they're both squeezing down the net. We're talking to the coach saying, okay, one player has to hold and one player makes a move because they both can't go forward like that. Otherwise, they will leave that gap at the back of the court. Yes, but our finalists here last year in mixed doubles. Losing finalist. Ah, oh, nice play. So good at the front of the court here. This match, he's been devastating. Every move that he's made has set up the attack. And then when he has had the opportunity to finish, it's been one shot. Yeah, right in the corner. Good flick. Interesting, you're talking about the flow of the game and sometimes it 
did not flowing well. There hasn't been one fault called on the serve in this match, and it has been a good flow to the match. Still a commanding lead for the Germans, leading 15 8 in this first game, the men's doubles final. Now 16 double scores. And definitely have looked the much more positive pair in this match. Just finding the space in behind. Yeah, definitely. That's the one, Mark. If, if they're going to compete, you've seen Adam earlier pop one over the top, got a winner that time. Vaka chose to push down the line past them rather than challenge the net. And they need to bring them away from the front of the court. Good serve again. I feel that there's just too much pressure on the front of the court for, for the poles to compete up there. Smash into the body. Bend it well. Vaka. Oh, landing in. Yeah, interesting. That time the pros opting to start the players at the back of the court, open up the court. Then Wackham made the move forward, took the tape on. Is that big challenge for the front court? We saw on the replay. It was Peter Kesbauer ducking to let the shuttle <laughs> fall out. It was well in and yeah. he was there. He was in position to take it. Three points in a row for the Poles. And again. Adam taking the net first on it there. You can just see the change in momentum. They're getting much better now onto the front court. They're getting much better onto the midcourt. German's looking to break up the rhythm now with the change of shuttle. And off we go. That's four in a row. You'd have to put that down to the experience again, Mark. Where they can get themselves back into the game. Many a pair would be trailing 10, 16, and yeah, might be already looking at the next would have let the first game go by now. Oh, through the lines. Nice. <laughs> I think I quite enjoyed that yeah, one, Mark. Yeah. That was a fantastic cross net <laughs> from Peter Kesbar. Brave because uh, there was enough air over the net really just to push it back into the body of Vaca, who was a little bit off balance with a racket in the wrong position after being playing it through, uh, through the legs. Get composure. Mm. There definitely has been a shift in momentum though. The, the Polish are much further up the court now. You can see that their base has come much up. And now that the challenge is really in the midcourt on the net. And it's a much more exciting match to watch. Because you can see the dynamics of men's doubles at its best. Who can take the front court? Who can control the midcourt? Who is going to be the pair that makes that chance to go forward to make the kill? And again... As we talked about in the, in the ladies' doubles earlier, you can see the physical side of things. And the, the physique of both these pairs, they, they haven't really been matched in their earlier rounds. We did have the interesting development from a Polish perspective in the quarterfinal. Where they were playing uh, their compatriots, and I think they had a little, a little uh, training uh, game for a, a game and a half before uh, the other Polish pair decided to uh, pave the way, let's call it, for their uh, Olympic-seeking uh, compatriots to get through to the semi-final. Certainly Chinese-esque, but they were close and they punched the poles, you know, and uh, they, they all know their role. <laughs> They know that it's Swalina and Vaca who are going for the Olympics. They, you know, every, everyone knows the positions. They're a good team unit, and uh, it's 
good to see that they've got the, the depth and the pairs there. It would have been more interesting to see if they would have been split up in the draw, if they, if they could have both made the final, but uh, it certainly set up an interest in the final, having this German-Polish match. And there was a lot of motion yesterday in the German-Polish game, and I'm sure both pairs are hoping to set the record straight. There it is again. <laughs> what vision from Kesbauer. How Shot of the match so far. How many shots have we seen the win replay. at the front court today? Traditionally, we're used to seeing the power and the, the strength come from the Germans, but that's really good hands, Mark. That touch just to turn it away. This week, actually, the Irish Open, we benefited from a little bit of diversity uh, in the draw because uh, over the last six, seven, eight weeks, we've had exactly the same players in all the draws. We had the Indian players, Atri and Reddy, touring Europe and uh, winning a lot of the matches. And, uh, you know, they were all starting to play each other so often. But we've had a little bit of variety this year because we have the tournaments also going on in America where some players have gone to that. So. Uh, it's been nice to see some different matches this week, this week in Dublin. Yeah, definitely. I think that the, the Polish men are, are a big favourite in Ireland. And, uh, a lot of players would recognise them, and a lot of fans and spectators would recognise them. Uh, and the fact that they get to play against different pairs when they're here and get to see new faces, it's, it's great for the game. So after battling back, then it's five game points for the Germans one save. There, but there definitely has been a, a small shift in momentum with the Poles now being able to compete at the front of the court and they're, they're, they're going to be coming out on the second game with a much different mindset Oh, I thought it was pushed long, but uh, again, it's Peter Kasbauer, and he's been the star of the show so far from a German perspective. 19 minutes gone, first game, Germany 21 16. You'd have to say he's been the outstanding party on court. Definitely the one that has been making the, the correct moves. He's the one that's going forward, he's the one that's setting up the play. But not only is he going fast forward onto the net after he makes that push. He's back up, he's got his racket out, and he's making an interception as well. Two or three moments of magic where he took the pace off the shuttle, and you'd have to say that uh, if it keeps going this way, the Germans would be favoured to win this. playing a song from uh, Mark's iPod now. This would be his normal music that he would listen to at the weekend. Hey. See their ladder Dolly Parton, so that's that's the normal song that Mark is yeah, uh, listening as to. As I'm getting older, I'm, I'm, I'm mellowing out, Daniel. I even sat down last night and listened to Daniel O'Donnell on the Late Late Show. <laughs> and I wasn't forced or induced to get sick <laughs> listening to it, so uh, I think that comes with age. Ah <laughs> yeah. oh, yes, great stop. And, and again, we've seen it. We're just controlling that forward here. This time back. Oh. Oh, cross 
court smash. Rafi back. Full stretch. Speed across, first of all, just to get there. You see that time uh, Peter made the move to the net, and this time he just wasn't there on time. Forced to left and setting up for both the, the Germans, huh? Body language and so good here, Mark. Baka never was the most positive in terms of body language and uh, I think it's certainly Peter Kesbauer is winning that mental battle on behalf of Germany against the Polish pair. But uh, traditionally we'd see the Poles fired up, we'd see the, we'd hear the command, you'd hear the they're they're walking away, there's no eye contact there. It's not looking positive at the moment. Yeah, no, as you said, not much eye contact there. And, uh, shoulders hanging a little bit, certainly from Vaca. Wallina is certainly trying to uh, get his partner focused. Yeah. Shake of the head again. You can see that uh, Adam's taking the lead. He's, he's trying to encourage him. and It's going to take a big change. Uh, there, that's more what we're used to. Yeah, yeah. They are coming forward on everything. Score has been outstanding so far in this match. That time again, he's doing the right thing. He's getting to the net, but he wasn't there on time and trying to push. Ends up in an upward direction and an easy knock off of the poles. Yes! It's just like watching a replay each time. Every time, Peter early on the net. Poles don't know which side to cover. And it's just a, it's a master class at the moment. Oh, oh God, there was venom in that. Ooh, certainly steep angle on the smash from Rafi Beck. Right down at the feet of Fokker. They it looks at the racket as if there's a hole in the strings. They took three smashes, the Germans there, and then they got one chance, and that was the difference. You know, other than we both know the poles so well, we would start to say it's probably starting to slip away from them, but very dangerous to say that when uh, Baca and Sorolina are on court. Complacent here. We've just got to keep pushing on because of these guys. Look like already here, Adam, recognizing that the momentum's going against them. Let's get a tile down. Let's break the rhythm. So easy in a, in a match uh, when you're trying too hard to get back into it that you want to keep stepping up to the the tee to get the, the the match back. Where it's much easier to take that step away, slow down the play. Make the opponents have to think on serve and try and get back into a rhythm. Concentration from Baka. The shuttle clip the net cord. There you go. They broke up the play and suddenly they've got the serve out. Let's see now if they can capitalize on that. Yeah. 
Said down when the poles get vocal, you meet you know they're they're in it. All of a sudden, that noise level has gone up a little bit from a Polish perspective. He's now uh, starting to move, he's starting to twitch, and you know you can see with his manner is when his confidence grows. The chest comes out, and then the game starts. Uncharacteristic error from Adam Solina. I don't think he expected it to come back to his yeah. head there. I think he was expecting something maybe down the backhand side. Yeah, it was interesting because uh, after the short lift came, Ovaka hit full power down the middle. You thought, okay, this is going to be it. And then just mistimed his jump completely. Kids watching you, you saw Ke I think it was Kezbao coming forward, pushing it, but Swalina was there with the racket up. Yeah. You know, if that racket was anywhere down here it was game, it was point over. Yeah. Racket up boys and girls. Yeah. And traditionally that that people talk about keeping the racket up, but it's not having the racket above your head level. Yeah. It's in front of your face because as you've seen there from Adam, he just turned the shuttle. It wasn't a big swing, he wasn't trying to hit it, he was just using the pace and turning the shuttle away from the players. Uh, many a time you see with the, the club players, racket up, racket up means it's almost on the ceiling, it's behind their, behind their ears, and then the big swing comes. There again. Just control of the shuttle. If you came here as a spectator today, that rally alone was worth the admission fee because this is doubles played at its best. Three times the crowd had thought the shuttle hit the floor there and suddenly it was back in play. Yeah, and back with something on it. You know, it, it wasn't just back in desperation. It was, it was forcing your opponent to think. You'd have to say the, the big difference there is the the control on the front court from the Germans has been somewhat better than the poles too far and the movement from the Germans has been more positive. So it's as if the poles are almost afraid to challenge the net now. Flat and fast, I think that was drifting out. Vodka was shouting just for Adam Sorlina to leave it. And that's the problem if you have your racket up. <laughs> Sometimes it's the temptation just to knock off everything. It's, uh, and the reaction speeds of these Bampton players, and especially the, the doubles and men's doubles. This time you might see it on the replay. That one pinging the line. Similar scoreline at the interval as the first game. I think it was 11-5 as well. Six-point lead, and the younger German pair looking much more fresh, much more aggressive. Yeah, 11-5 as you said, Dan, in the first, and now again in the second. There's not too many partnerships that can control this Polish pair like what the Germans have done today. Man of the match so far, you'd have to say Peter Kreisberg. It's the example he's giving on court, but he's actually winning that mental battle. You know, he's electing to change the shuttle at the times when it suits them, and uh, he's pushing. Uh, you can see him starting to push the buttons of certainly Vaca in, in, in some respects. And um, 
you can take that risk when you've got the power that he has behind him and back. You can take that risk going forward because you know he can control the shot from the pass, but the strength he has in the forearm when he gets it high, he's hitting it so hard out there today. Peter showing that he too can put the shot on the ground when he did. Just ticked over the half hour here in this men's doubles final, the Irish Open 2015. The German with the ascendancy. The Poles never say die attitude that will keep them in this game. Certainly will keep the Germans honest. Yeah. You said it earlier, Mark, where uh, any of partnerships at this stage, you'd be going to get your coffee because the game's over, but this one certainly isn't. The Poles will fight right to the end. class to be able to turn the shuttle from there right on his right hip and it's not to say it wasn't coming with speed open up the court then for a fact to make the easy winner they weren't expecting that cross switch Trying to keep the attack, but look how fast he's on. And I think it's just too small of haul, too fast of haul for the guys to try and go over the top because they don't want to give away that attack. Hey, legs again. See on the replay. <laughs> Concentration. Swally now following up. Yeah, I think he wanted to put a hole in that floor with that last one, Mark, just to prove a point. There, that's much more positive. That's him and a block and going forward. So when Peter went to play the shot, he could see him coming forward. And that makes it much more difficult. Okay, ready. Oh. And just like that, it's 10 13, and suddenly you would say this game is over. Adam definitely is one of those guys out there that can keep his power throughout a whole tournament. Powerful, strong, and willing to work hard in every match. Hey, hey. Another one, two in a row. Fuck him. Straight away, Beck looking to go to the service judge. Nothing wrong there, Mark. German has to think <laughs> what's coming. Yeah. Created that doubt in his head, and, uh, and that's again experience. Yeah. Followed by a pro serve. They're certainly expecting the skate smash. That off smash, such a clever shot. 
Both are in a good position there. One covering the line, one covering the middle, but then he just opened it up and had to be accurate, and it was. It's back to a four point margin. Still feel that um, if this game is going to change, the post have to get on that net, they have to take it away from Peter. Like that. Front court player pushing up. Then they had to use the midcourt and you're not gonna go through Adam in the in the middle of the court. He's too strong. He's got that physique to go through. Broken strings, Mark. <laughs> Thirteen fifteen, and it's down to two points. Who sang that song? <laughs> Not too sure, Mark. I, I, I can. I, um, I'll tell you, it'll come to me. Josh. Uh, it's Ed, wasn't it? Uh, yes! Canadian lady. The following line actually uh, holds up quite well. You can't play in broken strength because you can't feel anything. Yeah. That's, uh, that's how it was out there. That sums up my life. Anyway, back to the game. <laughs> so. James Morrison and Nelly Furtado. That's Good memory you have, Mark. Or good fingers on on, uh, on Google. <laughs> <laughs> right, back to the action. 16-13 in favour of the Germans in red. Throw this from the camera. Ah, uh, it's a move we wanted to see. We wanted to see Adam up there challenging, and it's what I like to see there is it's positive. He's doing it when he's down 16-13 because he knows if he doesn't take the chance, he's going to lose the match anyway. So. It's better to be brave and lose than to just let them control the match. And there's the difference again. Adam pushing at the front court, getting back up. If they can just somewhat way find control of the front, they can possibly get back into this now. Another easy mistake. They haven't been able to break it further than a two point gap though. I just feel like if it's gonna change they're gonna need to get at least this point. It's Beck who just looks a little bit nervous on the German side of the net. Again at the net. If this was match of the day, right now we will be getting our team to piece together the amount of times that he's done that, and we will be able to show maybe 10, 12 points easily in the last two games. Where he's also be forward. picking the man of the match, and there would be no uh, no question as to who it would be. But what's so difficult here is, Mark, you see they've challenged the net, every time they've played soft to the net, Peters closed it down and made the knockoff. There, Adam then decides, okay, I'm not going to try that, I'm going to try and push into the midcourt. Beck's power has just been so strong, so your third option then always is to go into the long corners, but in a hall like Baldoyle where it's fast and the shuttle is hard to control, it's not really an option, so you have to try and be better on the net. And that's what they've tried, but have been beaten in that area today. Yeah, so 41 minutes in this men's doubles final, and it's match point for Rafi Beck and Peter Kesbar, Germany. Come on. Right in the first 
Foy. That was well done. They have Weller to storm for one more, but yeah. one more is one more. Another one saved. You think if they can get another one, then all of a sudden the Germans get, get edgy. A psychological break in play. Just to try and stop that momentum. That should have been it. I think Rafi Beck knows that. I just mentioned it a few few points ago that he start, he's looking a little bit nervous. I just could not get that shuttle off his body there to get it over his head. And But what he did well was he kept it over. He made him play one more shot. And that's what you need to do in these points. Beck wasn't expecting it. Back. Forced to lift. Soft. Peter Kesbar. Yeah, oh, that's it. There it is. Error in the end from Vaca. And it's the Germans who take the title 21-18 in the second after winning the first. Victory for Peter Kaspar, who was a runner-up last year in the mixed, from my memory. So uh, particularly nice for him. He controlled the play. He was the outstanding player. Yeah, sheer delight. And I think the fact that they've beaten this Polish pair will mean a lot to them. It's, it's a big win. And when you're beating a pair that has, has been here and done it, that, that adds value to the win. So that was great. So there it is, that was our men's doubles with the German pair Raphael Beck and Peter Kalsberg coming out the winners. Uh, this will be followed up now by the ladies singles where we've got a Denmark match where Rode versus Conan of Germany, the number seven of four seats.
Guys, uh, congratulations, uh, Peter and Ashley, you to come back and win this year. Uh, I won up by the end of last year, so uh, a good for you. Yeah, very good for you. Last year it was two stars, this year it's stars, and it's definitely, definitely better for you. You've had a few uh, matches against them in the last uh, year or so, and I think it was 3 1. So, uh, you still get an ad against the Wolves today? Uh, it's, uh, we played them in the very first time in the fifth round, so uh, and, uh, it's every time last season to, uh, to play against them, it's every time action. And uh, a good game, almost every time, uh, as we said, and now we beat them in the final, and it's uh, everything. Yeah, you had a good semi final. Uh, Full of action, full of passion in the game today. The key, I think, here in the United Movement was uh, the, the, the net, how you play the net and come forward at the net, putting a lot of pressure on the balls. Yeah, definitely. This time, uh, that ball is like, I have to go to the net, I have to win the net, I have to get the net, and then it's not his bad touch. That's our strong side, and then this time it was definitely better. And the rush of the match today was, they did it much better, so they lost, and this time it's up. In Italy, hopefully we will see them again and try and see them again. Thank you very much. Great to see you here again. Always great to welcome Germany here tomorrow. We hope you enjoy it.